Hello there YouTube and in today's video I'm going to be discussing the advantage that board games have when it comes to playing Dungeons and Dragons. So guys, some people might be unaware of this, but Wizards of the Coast for a good many years now have been releasing the occasional board game. Uh, in front of you is just one of I believe it's five board games that they've released. This is The Legend of Durist. And it's based on the Dritzt novels. Um, what's really interesting about <clears throat> these board games is that for about 35 to 45 pound, depending on where you actually buy them from, you can get a lot of different models and I've heard a good few people talking about these board games and how that uh, if you are a fan of Dungeons and Dragons they're not worth your time and not worth your money and it's much better to just go and play the real thing. And in this video my hope is that I will change your opinion slightly and talk about the advantages that buying one of these board games has. So apart from being a fun and somewhat interesting time waste, um, like many games are, you could argue. What actually comes in the box? Well, you have a rule book, and this is something I find really interesting, okay? The rules for all of these board games, uh, for The Legend of Drift, Wrath of Shardalon, you know, Castle Ravenloft, all of those, is very similar, meaning that I could take a character like Dritzt, who comes in this box set, and I could potentially carry him through this adventure and the others. Um, and that makes for quite an interesting, fun little experience and little gameplay scenario, where for people who have never actually sat down and played Dungeons and Dragons, they get a very accurate representation of a simplistic game. This is Dungeons and Dragons simplified down um, to a very very childlike level and it's fun. It's still a fun game. There are still miniatures, there's still dice rolling. The only thing that's taken out of it is the role playing. Um, and that's simply because you don't need a dungeon master for this kind of game. It's just players. Now, way back when they actually did make a Dungeons & Dragons board game that used simplified rules that did require a dungeon master. Um, but I would argue that these board games are slightly better in that they... If you maybe you have dungeon mastered for a long time, and maybe some other members of your group don't wish to wait until the next game is ready, you can just jump straight into a board game and have a lot of fun with it. Um, so without further ado, guys, let's just jump straight into it. Even though all of these board games are different, they all contain the same kind of items. And I'll talk about their uses in just general Dungeons & Dragons games, as well as in the board games. Of course we have a rule book right here. Uh, the thing about the rule book that I'm a big fan of is that it's only about 15 pages long. It tells you everything you need to know, and it has a simple system FAQ on the back. So if you have any questions... Uh, a lot of the times they will be answered right on the back there for you. What we do have here is the adventure book. Now this is super simple. The biggest problem with the adventure book is that it's only about 12, 13 adventures long. Um, that's very depressing. Um, but it's more than enough. Uh, I will argue that it is more than enough. They can be quite challenging and quite fun. And for the price tag of this game... The amount of stuff that you get, uh, in, I think maybe, I think they should have pushed it to about 20 in my opinion. But um, that may be me being very demanding. It's very simple how you do it. You simply read through, say, the adventure synopsis here. And it tells you exactly how to set up the adventure. Um, the specific rules that you should be aware of. And a little sort of flavour thing right there. Flavour text. Uh, so that when you're starting it, you can sort of 
get the atmospheric mood. Um, now we get into the fun stuff. Put those to one side. We start off with things like dungeon tiles, right? Now, if anyone is familiar with this channel, I'm a big fan of dungeon tiles, guys. Uh, dungeon tiles, I think, are absolutely fantastic. They are a brilliant, brilliant resource. And what we actually get is a lot of caverns here. They simply just clip together like that, and you start building a dungeon up. Now, I'm pretty sure you can tell why I think this is fantastic. And this is because whether you're a fan of the board game or not, you can still so easily make use of these. There's nothing stopping you from taking these and making a little cavern map up and putting it down for a regular game of good old 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder or whatever you'd like. The only things that would maybe get in your way are they've got little markers on them here, little bits of writing, but I'm sure that you can overlook those for the fact that you've got a lovely modular map going on. And we actually have quite a lot of these modular tiles. This side here is full of them as well as this side. Um, what we also have in Massive Edition is tokens. There are lots and lots of tokens in here to represent all different kinds of awesome things. Um, and I've got to be honest with you guys. There are some things we have. We have things like treasure, treasure chests. I can't speak. Um, these can be very useful, not just for combining with the dungeon tiles that we get with this set, but you can use them to block off certain markers on the board if you want to, um, whatever you'd like to do. However, they also have things that are very specific to the game, like they have these condition markers here, which would not be useful in any other scenario apart from this game same as these here I mean you don't need them unless you're playing the board game and even when you're playing the board game you still don't need these as much one thing that I am a big fan of with this is they have these little uh, cards for the villains um, which, if you are inventive with it, same as the player characters, if you are inventive with this, uh, you can take these and turn these into NPCs quite easily in your Dungeons & Dragons home games. But one thing I'm a big, big, big fan of, guys, of uh, these box sets, is their dungeon tiles. They are pretty fun, pretty simple and modular. And because all the sets are made the same with this same design and pattern, it means no matter what set you buy, you can always clip them together. Meaning that I can always combine, say, these cavern tiles with, um, you know, the halls of Castle Ravenloft. Um, the possibilities here, as a result, are extraordinary so I'm a very big fan of these and for me this makes it worth the price tag of say 35 pounds <clears throat> another thing I'm a very big fan of and I'm sure you've heard a lot of people talking about these is the miniatures now this is a balrog right here or a, a balor uh, in the Dungeons and Dragons term but the the build quality and the detail on these miniatures is absolutely fantastic. You also have little names on the bottom so that you can find out what they are. Some trolls. Now, if you are a fan of painting your own miniatures, you can add different paint schemes to these to really give them a nice quality that pops. But uh, they are very interesting looking miniatures for certain. Same with the uh, hero and villain miniatures as well. Here we have a Mind Flayer, and you can see that the Mind Flayer miniature is absolutely fantastic. Very interesting, has some information on the bottom there about who this Mind Flayer is. Beautiful cape and details on there. So we've discussed the 
uses of these dungeon tiles. Uh, if you have multiple of these board games, you can combine these together and make some really large, really interesting cavern systems um, or what have you. Um, one other thing that we have here is we have things like tokens and these cards. We have these different decks. Now this is specific to the board game in that you'll be drawing cards from the encounter decks, from the monster decks and all that. But one thing that you can take from the board game and bring into your regular game that I haven't seen anyone talking about is these treasure cards. You see guys, the treasure cards are quite interesting because when I first started playing Dungeons and Dragons, my DM had a pile of treasure cards. They were completely random and he made sure that all of the items in there were specific to our level. However, um, what he did was if we say found a chest or defeated an enemy, um, he would decide whether or not it was worth us taking something from the treasure pile and if we did we got to draw a random card and use it now the biggest problem you have with these is that they're of course in the board game mechanics meaning you couldn't take a card like this and use it straight away in fifth edition it uses a different system of course however what you could do is you could take the item Wand of Magic Missile, and you could go, okay, well, I'll just look up what that item does in the book, and I can give you the Wand of Magic Missile, and you've still drawn from a deck of treasure. Um, and the great thing is, is a lot of these are very random things. Some of these are fortunes, which I don't think you could use, um, but the actual items themselves could definitely, definitely... Uh, go into a random deck that the DM or the players could draw from and use in their games. So these are very interesting little um, mechanics that I have used in the past and I think are very interesting and exciting for players. So guys, to summarise, with the Dungeons & Dragons board games, you get an interesting no DM needed experience, a very simplified version of what Dungeons and Dragons is and what it can be. But nevertheless, you get a board game that is exciting and fun. One thing that you do get is you get an opportunity to expand your collection when it comes to role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons. You get a horde of exciting miniatures for a very cheap very reasonable price. In combination with that, you also get a deck filled with items and magical loot that you can take to your home table games, if you feel confident enough to improvise it and to use it, then why not? What you also get is a collection of dungeon tiles. Sure, they're very generic, sure, they might have details that you don't need on the front, however, they are nevertheless dungeon tiles that you can use and you can deploy in your games to add something different for your players. You get detail and you get variety and you get it all for about £40. That's a reasonable price for something of this quality. Not to mention you get a board game to do with your favourite topic. I've heard some people on YouTube saying that if you're going to play Dungeons and Dragons you might as well play the real thing. And I can agree with that to some extent. However, not all groups um, exist where, you know, one player wants to be the DM. Sometimes everybody wants to play. And in those situations, the board game can be an interesting uh, way of getting ideas and getting some miniatures, getting all your friends together and playing. It can be a very fun way of you and maybe one other person sitting around and having fun in between your regular D&D sessions. Or it can be used as an opportunity and a reason to get some fantastic looking miniatures that you can then paint up and put onto your board and have a fantastic time with. Guys, I think the Dungeons & Dragons board games are a, an investment. I think they're something that... 
if you look for the uses, you can get a lot of use out of them. I think if you don't, then you're going to get a game that is going to sit on your shelf and is going to provide you a few sessions of fun. For me, I plan on running through this adventure book with a friend of mine. I plan on having a great time doing it, and then I plan on taking all these miniatures, all these dungeon tiles, and trying to figure out adventures in which I can use them. Uh, that is what I think the board game does best, is it gives you opportunity for your regular Dungeons & Dragons games. Thank you for watching guys, I hope this has uh, inspired some of you, I hope that this has answered the question of should you get a, the Dungeons & Dragons board game. Have a great day, thank you for watching.